three meter track. Look at that. Right now it's the 2650mm Makita track. So maybe you're thinking about buying one of these? Straight away I'm going to say, as a builder you should have one of these. Because I've built for like 10 years in New Zealand before I even saw one of these. And then I went over to the UK and every single builder I came across, they mostly had the Fessel brand version of this. I think this here was uh, modelled directly off the Festool one. So far, you know, in the few months that I've been using it, it works pretty much the same as the Festool. So because I just bought this track, the rubber is, they leave the rubber sticking out a bit. Now that is so when you get the track, the first cut you make with it, you can get that rubber lining up with the guide. So they leave it a bit long and then you, your first cut gets it 100%. Uh, cut a little line of my wood there, but now that has been trimmed to suit the blade. You can use it without a vacuum, but I would highly recommend using a vacuum. But part of what makes the track saw so good is that the blade's all encased in the metal, and therefore dust just goes straight out of the hole out the back of it. And with a vacuum working, it goes straight in the vacuum. So when you're cutting plywood like this, all you have to do is make two marks, one at each end. And uh, sit that track on it. Now the rubber is there as, I think, two things. One, it presses down, so when you're cutting, nothing will chip up. And the other reason is, it's an anti-slip. So when you're pushing the saw down and moving it along, you're not going to slide the rail in any direction. See, look at that, mint cut. Even with a blunt blade, we're still getting a factory edge cut. So the saw has a lot of little features. Has a little speed control here. We always just keep it on the highest. Six, don't really use that. These knobs here, once you've got the, uh, the saw on the track, you adjust these knobs to tighten it to the rail because there's actually a little bit of room in the rail. And this thing here, this is like a lock. It's got a little washer there, and that that sort of clamps it on the rail. So if you have the saw set on a 45 degree angle with all the weight out here, that little ring will prevent the saw from tipping off the track. And you've got your angle adjustment here to achieve that 45 degree. Most importantly, you've got your depth adjustment, so you can suit the depth of the plunge cut to whatever you're cutting. So we've done all our long cuts with the guide rail formerly known as the three meter guide rail and now all we need is the short one. I have these guide rail connectors and another short guide rail because initially we just combined the two 1400 millimeter long ones and made a 2.8 where we wanted to do long cuts but when you tie it to get when you stitch them together they're not perfect you have to get a straight edge out make sure they're perfect then tighten them and all that time that that takes, just, it was a lot of wasted time. So that's why I picked up that longer guide rail there. So all we do is use that for the long lengths, and then we can just whip out the one for the short lengths. So usually this kind of assembly work would be done in a workshop. Um, we don't have a workshop. We tend to say no to this kind of, this kind of job because of that. But this is a small job, so we figured we could we could handle it. And I feel like the track saw is super handy for these situations because, sure, it's not as good as a full-scale table saw, but it gets pretty close. That's kind of a good way to think about the track saw. It's like it's kind of like a portable table saw. You're instead of taking a sheet of wood to the table saw, you're taking the saw to the sheet of wood, and with the rubber 
stickers on the underneath, you're not going to scratch that surface up. So for a builder, it's a really good tool to have. There you go. With a track saw, you can uh, cut a beautiful box like this as if you were in a fully equipped workshop. So yeah, for the guide rail it was like $300, for the saw it was about $800, and if you go with the festival saw I think it's more like $1100, so, and in my experience, I mean I didn't use the festival long enough, but in my experience, the difference between the two track saws is negligible. Maybe if you've used the festival for longer, you've probably got a better idea, comment below. Anything to add to the track saw review bro? Make sure you got a vacuum really. Make sure you got a vacuum. That's the Scott Brown Carpentry Guide to... Track source.